like an outsider. So before they accepted Paul, Paul, they had a meeting and they said to Paul, one thing that we ask, you know, preach the gospels, but one thing we ask of you is that you will teach, you will teach, you will take care of widows and needies. Yeah. And today it's almost it sounds like it's more of a responsibility of the church. We don't think about them. And so my heart is drawn to that that girl. You know, I I sit down sometimes. I think sometimes we should, when we have our breakfast or our dinner, we should remember that there are some families that cannot, if they have oatmeal, it's like the biggest celebration of the year. In a whole year, they never had a meal as good as oatmeal. Mm-hmm. And so whenever we can, I'm not I'm not trying to put guilt on you, please don't whenever we can, as much as it's within you, do for these people. Okay. You know, I, I, I thank God that my Pastor Jerry has a heart for um, reaching out to those kind of people who, who, who does that like, as small as this church is, they still do a uh, try to do a lot to reach out to people. Praise God. So we we'll, we'll keep that, we we'll keep the living in our prayer. I, I pray that God will, will give us the best home. Yeah. Will give us the best home according to his good pleasure. Yes. She's going to find a good place to live. She's going to find a good place that she's going to work clothes. She's going to be happy. She's going to have fun. She's going to grow up to become. She's going to have all the possibilities, all the options. Hallelujah. That we all want for our kids. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 I believe we have a lively house. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so I'll just take this announcement for um, so there is the uh, Bible story that goes up that happens at Pastor's uh, residence. Uh, that's 3 7 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. And there's the prayers on Mondays, which is also at Pastor's house. It's happening at um, 7 p.m. So let's uh, try and join and pray and pray the Bible study as well. So that we can you know, grow in the faith and in the word of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So, um, <coughs> I have a lesson that I prepared here today. It's uh, it's titled, I titled with the value of wisdom. Uh, and I was going to go through the book of Proverbs. Uh, Solomon wrote Proverbs, and it's also referred to as the preacher. Solomon is one of the, the uh, book of Proverbs, one of the books that has the words of wisdom. It has a lot of words about purpose and the wisdom and who God is and the wisdom of God and how wisdom the, the value of wisdom for us as a people. Amen. Um, but just before I start, I would like to um, I would like to pray with us, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that this word that we will go into will prosper in our lives and there will be a reflection of you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let this world go into the recess of our hearts, into our lives and touch us and bring healing and bring hope and bring life and revive us O God and inspire us to do great things for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I, 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 I would like us to open to the book of um, Proverbs chapter 8. We're going to read a couple of verses here. Um, the the young, young folk, folks are here today. So they will be here. So I don't know how I can make the lesson a little bit attractive and simple to them so they can understand. Amen. Um, with, with the agreement of their parents, should we have a detention center somewhere here? Let's go. All of you, if, if uh, we're going to have a detention center here, for praise God. And if, if, if you're detained, it's going to be because of money. So we can we can play money with daddy. Hallelujah. I'm joking. I'm joking. That's a joke. So don't, don't, don't be scared. Amen. So Paul, in the book of Ephesians, I'm going to try and make this. Uh, it's going to be like a teaching, and I, I also want people to like. If you want to stop me and ask a question, please do. 
um, in the book of Ephesians, um, Apostle Paul wrote a letter in, in the beginning. He was building the church and talking about his ministry and tell, telling people, um, acknowledging the work of ministry that has been done, the life that has been saved, and new combat that have come to church. And it was the next, what, what he said in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18 was like, it was, he said a prayer, and the prayer was that God, I pray that you will give these people wisdom and revelation in knowing you. Praise God. And that's, that prayer becomes, is so important to every one of us, because sometimes, I don't know how many of us, after you, after you give your life to Christ, if you, if you give your life to Christ, after you give your life to Christ, there is almost usually a point where it's like, I don't know what to do in this Christianity. I've given my life to Christ, I've gone through the, is it the ritual of like, oh, I accept Jesus Christ, I confess and know all of that. But what do you do next? We just keep living our life the same way, sometimes nothing changes, sometimes we're still a little bit mean and the same mean person and same upset person, and things don't really change. So what Paul was saying, that I pray, we will have the wisdom and revelation in knowing God. Because when we have the wisdom and revelation of who God is, it begins to be a reflection on us. And it begins to change our way of thinking. It begins to change the way we live our lives every day. Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 12, he was speaking to the church and he was saying, I beseech you brethren, by the message of Jesus Christ, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Then in the verse 2, he talked about, he said, I'm being not conformed to the traditions, mm -hmm. to the ways of this world, but be ye transformed by renewing your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest aspect of our life after we confess our life to Jesus Christ. That's the greatest aspect. And that's one of the reasons that we're losing the young people in church. Because we can't... Before, I couldn't articulate the faith that I have to my children. And very soon, it's not going to make sense to them. Very soon, it's going to sound like that. And just, so, at the point, they can fall into church because I am that, and I insist to go with me. Mm -hmm. But at some point, when they get to the point where they can make their own choice, they will make the choice based on what is important to them, what they know, what is real to them. And so if the faith that we so profess is not real to our children, the natural decision is for them to go with what seems real, which is the world. And so Paul was saying, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, says there's a pattern of thinking in the world. There is a way the world lives, which is different from the kingdom. And that's why in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs from chapter 8, from, we're going to take a look at some verses in Proverbs 8 and understand the wisdom that is being spoken about here. Amen. He said, can you open the open our Bible to the book of Proverbs from uh, verse 10? Proverbs from verse 10. Are we all there? So it's, it says uh, from the translation I'm reading. Choose my instruction instead of silver. This is wisdom speaking. Um, Solomon was writing based on the inspiration from God. And you hear it. It sounded like it was inspired that I was speaking. But most times it was referring to an inspiration from the Holy Spirit. And, it was, and that was wisdom. Wisdom was speaking to him. And we understand what, later on we understand what the wisdom is. It says, choose instruction instead of silver. Acknowledge rather than choice gold. Verse 11. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire 
can be compared to her. Nothing in this life can be compared to wisdom. He said, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. These are some of the attributes that sometimes is so important in you rising in the world. But yet the Bible says, I hate this. The world makes us to believe that gold and silver and precious things are the most important in life. The Bible says those things in themselves do have importance. Those things, those because sometimes we wake up early and we run and we chase things in life to get ahead, to get to retirement. Many of us work so hard because we want to have a stable retirement, a retired life. We want to be able to provide for our children. And sometimes the world keep piling on us. A few years ago, uh, we had our parents who work, they work for like 40 years. They work in one place for 40 years, they go home, they go to work, come back home. That's, that's how most families work. Uh, maybe one person is working, and one person is taking care of the children, and, uh, and the children are well taught about life, and trained, and taught different things. But today, it's like the economy says, determines how we live our lives. I'm not questioning those things, but I'm just trying to show us how things have changed. But, but um, wisdom is, the preacher here is saying, amongst all these things, wisdom is the most important. Wisdom is the way God does things. There's the wisdom of this world, and there's the wisdom of the kingdom. Wisdom of the kingdom of God. Praise God. And that's the same thing that Jesus was alluding to if you read the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 where it says, in all that you seek, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the other things shall be added to you. Jesus says, don't worry, if you read that, if you read that chapter, it says, do not take thought about tomorrow. He said, tomorrow we take care of itself. It's not, for, it's not, Jesus was not saying that don't work or don't plan or don't do what you need to do. Jesus was talking about the condition of our heart. He was talking about the worry, the fear, the anxiety that takes over our lives, that affects every decision of our lives. A lot of us take decisions on impulse and on fear and anxiety. <coughs> Praise God. And so he's saying wisdom is the most precious thing, it's a fear of the Lord. And the verse says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The actual fear and reverence of God is the beginning of knowing anything. In other words, the, the source of wisdom, when you start think, talking about wisdom, is actually when you begin to know God and reverence God. The source of everything about science, about technology, about the solar system, everything we know to be comes from when we start fearing God. You understand? I'm going to show you a scripture that knowledge of witty inventions, things that have never existed, is in God. And God gives it to whomever he wants to give it to. And God says, wisdom says, there's somewhere here, verse 17. He said, I love those who love me, and those who seek me will find me. The wisdom is Jesus Christ. If you go to the book of uh, the book of First Corinthians chapter 2, after the first Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, Bible says wisdom, Jesus Christ, is the wisdom of God. Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. If you read, if you go down in this passage, we don't have so much time. It talks about wisdom being there with God in the beginning. And who was there with God in the beginning? It was the word. Bible says in John chapter 1. He said the word was God. 
and he was with God in the beginning. And that was pleased to be Jesus. The Bible actually called Jesus the wisdom of God. So when we're referring to the word wisdom, we're actually referring to Christ, the embodiment of the word of God and wisdom of God. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the express image. That means Jesus Christ is all that God is. That's why Jesus Christ spoke to the, the, the Pharisees. He said, if you see me, you see God on fire. He said, I'm in the same way as God, and you are seeing me. Because all the fullness of God, of the Godhead, was right in that, inside Jesus. Amen. And so Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. And that wisdom transcends everything that is in this life. If you live here, praise God. He says, I was with God. I framed the pillars of this earth. I set the boundaries of the sea. It was the wisdom of God that did that. Praise God. And so, where the Bible says in the beginning, it says, do not, it says, all the treasures of this world is nothing compared to wisdom. And it also says, it said, durable riches, wealth, is all in my hands. He said, health and strength is all in wisdom. But if you seek wisdom, and the psalmist said also, he said, in all, <coughs> he said, this was the counsel he gave. He said, in all you seek, seek wisdom above all. He said, it is the principal thing. Another verse, another translation says, it is the supreme thing. Above all else, it's wisdom. Wisdom can take your business from where it is right now to beyond your dreams. Wisdom can give you a rest restoration of health. Wisdom will open your eyes. Wisdom will take you out of the realm of fear and anxiety and bring you to a, realm, a place of peace and prosperity. <laughs> it's not about... Have you, have you guys ever heard of the saying where you can be very lonely and isolated in the midst of the crowd. Mm -hmm. You can be in the midst, you can be in a concert, and there's party jamming, music jamming, and you, everybody is excited, and that person is so lonely, isolated, <coughs> without friends, inside, in the midst of the crowd. Mm -hmm. So you could have storms around you, you could have troubles, you could have things falling, you could have things going bad, but with the wisdom of God, you just feel confident. Jesus, the, the, uh, in the book of Psalms, says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of that time. It means that during this generation, instead of wisdom and knowledge that you seek after will keep you stable in the midst of everything happening. The world is not going to get better according to the Bible prophecies. But the Bible says, They that know their God will remain strong and they will continue to do exploits. 